Hello, uh, my name is Wilson Rodriguez, and uh, this is an extra credit assignment from Bioengineering 159 for uh, Dr. Stoltz. And I will be doing my extra credit assignment on the oxygen gradient completely engineered um, cartilage construct. Um, this paper was done by Malda et al. Um, and uh, it goes over uh, the simple, simple diffusion uh, characteristics. Um, in particular, they wanted to um, elucidate the diffusion of oxygen through cartilage, uh, and cartilage is a very high fibrous tissue, um, and has, uh, but it's also linked with the cells, which are chondrocytes. The chondrocytes are the cells that secrete this uh, tough extracellular matrix. Um, for their model, they uh, to simulate cartilage, they used um, they used a polymer, uh, a polyglycolic acid, and uh, they used this polymer to lace their chondrocyte cells. And uh, the cells um, were allowed to uh, incubate over a, over a few days. Uh, from there, they uh, they made a construct. Um, shown here in figure one. So a cylinder construct where the cells uh, cells were incubated in, in the, uh, the, the polymer and uh, oxygen was allowed to diffuse um, down the surface here this, this surface here but oxygen was not allowed to diffuse through the side walls or the bottom uh, their main objective was to uh, was to find how how deep how deep uh, they they can make the construct and still have oxygen diffused there, and then also find information on uh, the oxygen consumption by the chondrocyte cells uh, because these cells are in such a high uh, Tough extracellular matrix. It's very thick. It's very, uh, and it's also in a location where uh, there's a low there's a low amount of, uh, of blood vessels um, running through the area that the, the low oxygen concentration is found there. So, so they made a uh, mathematical model, which is which is really based on uh, very simple diffusion. Uh, mathematics or uh, physics based ideas um, where there's uh, oxygen has a, a diffusive coefficient um, the cells have a rate of oxygen consumption there's a constant uh, concentration found at the surface and uh, there's a rate of oxygen through the construct um, they have these boundary conditions, which I uh, iterated above, where oxygen does not diffuse through the walls or through the bottom, and the the surface of the the top surface of the construct uh, that is in contact with the uh, oxygen medium remains at a constant 21 percent. They're using a percent so that regardless of the volume of the construct or the medium, uh, the the percent keeps the, the oxygen at a constant rate of 21% of the overall volume. Um, there's also no flux uh, in this model, so oxygen isn't being uh, pushed through uh, the, the, the polymer uh, cartilage um, simulator. Uh, it was found here that uh, there was a, a a construct that was cultured for 28 days and it was found that the cell density decreased according to depth. Um, I, I modeled this in MATLAB using its else statement and uh, it worked out pretty nice. Um, they also uh, studied just the polymer without cells to see if it would change oxygen diffusion or uh, if the polymer itself consumed oxygen in a chemical way. Uh, and they found that no, the polymer does not affect oxygen. It flatlines at 21%. Um, 
then here they made a porous scaffold uh, with cells and uh, the, the, there was a, an obvious oxidant infection. So they found that. Um, they, they studied the oxygen diffusion and they measured the oxygen concentration um, over the course of uh, 14, 27, and uh, 41 days and oxygen was able to reach the lower ends of the, the, the depth of the construct. Um, uh, each one, um, or, or they, they all pretty much look about the same, although some start to get, or like the 41 days are starting to look a little more linear. That's where the very early uh, 14 days is very uh, exponential. Um, downward. Uh, so th th this is uh, something typically seen to when looking into uh, oxygen diffusion. And so they gave um, their their values that they used as far as uh, diffusion coefficients go and uh, some that were given by other papers. They also uh, gave an idea of the overall uh, effect that each variable has on the uh, on these equations and so depending on the parameter you could adversely affect the, the equation and the calculation of the mathematical model so uh, uh, so here we have a, a construct that was cultured for 27 days uh, and again it, the, the solid line is the model the, the, the connected dots are the, uh, the, the measured uh, concentrations of the oxygen and let's see, uh, so it and, and this again shows the same the, the same trend or overall trend of the uh, of oxygen diffusion curve. Um, down below at the end of the paper we can find the nomenclature for all the variables as well as the appendix where it goes into depth on their uh, mathematical model which goes over the diffusion coefficient concentrations um, above and below a reference point and then in a radial direction within and, and out of a reference radial position minus the oxygen consumption uh, and then this 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 method of solving for the concentration at, at any given time uh, and at any given position gives for a, a volume um, which Using the 21%, we can relate it back to um, a moles per liter or a moles per meter cubed. That's the end of the paper, and okay, so let's go over the MATLAB um, code. Uh, here in the MATLAB code, uh, we start with. Um, a, a general line that is usually given by uh, uh, to, to make sure that the workspace is clear that there aren't any variables uh, with the same name uh, that could adversely affect the rest of the MATLAB code and uh, so th this is always this line is always good hat. Uh, I made it I, I made the the MATLAB code after uh, after getting a few graphs I thought of of uh, getting a user input instead. Um, so I have a time, you can input a time, and it'll ask you to enter a time in minutes and for a diffusion coefficient. And then from there, the starting concentration is 21 for the 21%, the ending concentration is 0, so the bottom of the construct. Um, I, this is a value that uh, does bookkeeping. Um, and it does bookkeeping for the y value. The y value is what we're solving for, and I'm pre-allocating space in y uh, for later use. Uh, this helps the the code run a little faster. Here's the uh, uh, here's the uh, oxygen consumption rate. Although, um, as you can see down in the rest of the code, that changes. Um, <coughs> so. Uh, as far as solving for the oxygen consumption rate or the, 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 the oxygen concentration at any given point um, oh, at a certain time, uh, I use the for loop. So as long as uh, 
as long as the position near x is between 0 and uh, 2,000 micrometers, uh, the, the board loop will continue looping and, and solving the equation until, uh, until final, um, and, until, the, until the condition is no longer met, so the condition is no longer true, so, uh, so it runs uh, through this. Um, so the first if here is to check if x is less than or equal to 400 micrometers and then set the oxygen consumption rate at 2 to something negative 3 um, moles per meter squared second I believe it was and then uh, else if is if this condition here is not true then it checks a new condition it checks to see if it's between 400 and 800 micrometers and if it is then it sets it to, to 8 times 10 to the negative 4 and then if this condition isn't met either, it moves on to the next, and so on. Um, uh, the the if else statements end with else, um, where if uh, none of these previous conditions are met, then it just goes with uh, the final uh, oxygen consumption rate of the cell. Once it has an oxygen consumption rate, it plugs in all of the numbers into the y value. Note that when you start I will be 1 so it'll find the the first array in the y in the y matrix and it will solve for the concentration at the given x position with the given consumption rate and then allocate it into that array then I will grow by 1 and when it solves it again, it'll then change the second uh, allocated spot for the array. Uh, once it's done, it will uh, exit the for loop, and we can plot our y versus our x. And then we can also give it labels, and give it a title. And uh, uh, set our limits and, and set labels and titles and so on. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, run this code. Alright, so MATLAB has prompted us to enter a time. I'm going to enter it in 20 minutes. It's asking for a diffusion coefficient. I'm going to use these values from the model paper, which is 3.8 times 10 to the negative. All right, look at that. We got a nice, uh, we got a nice curve that uh, drops down uh, to zero uh, con oxygen concentration um, at around 600 micrometers, maybe. So th this is a good example of oxygen diffusion because this is actually something that is seen in uh, when measuring oxygen concentrations. And if we go back to the paper and uh, find yeah, so if we find one of these, uh, one of their measurements versus the mathematical model, we see that hey, yeah, this does look a lot like our calculated value. And if we run it for a longer time, our our graph will look similar to uh, theirs. You know that they plotted it for 27 days, I only did it for 20 minutes. So uh, let's see if we can uh, change that a little uh, by going back to the back to the code. Getting the save run again. Uh, let's try for uh, let's try for an hour, so 50 minutes. Uh, diffusion coefficient. Let's use the same coefficient. All right. Doesn't look like it changed very much. So maybe we have to step it up. So now let's try for. Let's try for an hour, and then select the number of hours. So let's try let's try four hours, and then let's use the same diffusion coefficient again. All right, so now we're seeing a significant change to where 
the oxygen concentration has now uh, penetrated a, more, uh, a longer depth, uh, and at uh, previous depth, 600, we saw that uh, the concentration before had dropped down to almost near zero um, percent, uh, but now at 600 micrometers, we we're seeing an increase in oxygen concentration at that location. Let's try something um, outrageously large. So uh, let's try something like that. And then the same diffusion coefficient. Ah, so look at that. So uh, regardless of the depth, oxygen has been able to penetrate almost all of it. Um, so th this is a good uh, this is a good mathematical model. It uh, represents um, oxygen diffusion pretty well, and it, from the results, it, it's consistent. It's um, and it's measured. So uh, this uh, this mathematical model, as far as uh, the, the as far as the super goes, is a very good model. Um, uh, one more last thing to to note is that. Uh, that I use an error function to model the diffusion coefficient. So this would be a transient diffusion model. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed my uh, MATLAB tutorial uh, on uh, doing oxygen diffusion or just diffusion in general. You could change this uh, for realistically anything. Um, I hope uh, you learned uh, something from using the input. Um, as far as uh, using a for loop and its else statement, um, and making your plot look uh, pretty, I suppose. Um, there's also a uh, short summary of the paper in uh, in my summary uh, for the extra credit assignment, uh, which I will have uh, provided. Um, so, uh, thank you for watching, uh, and thanks everyone.